Muslim. If Jesus isn't telling the truth in the Gospels, then I have no means by which I can say that Muhammad isn't a true prophet. I don't understand what that means. Okay, let me break it down for you very simply. Yes, Jesus I'm a very Christ simple man. Jesus says many things in the Gospels. You tend to be a Christian, I believe. No. So, no? Never a Christian? Nope. Never? Nope. Oh, my, my apologies then. I guess you were an atheist or, or some kind of pagan before. I uh, just say I was an atheist, okay, yeah. Okay, awesome. Well, in the Bible, Jesus Christ says many things about himself. Okay. For example, you know, he says that he's the way, the truth, and the life. I'm the life. He says that you have to, um, or that you should ask him for anything and he'll give it to you. He says that he can give his son all life, he will okay. raise people on the last day, all these kind of interesting things, right? Okay. So these things are all claims of divinity, all things that I believe even within the Quran context, Allah himself says that he will do. Raising you from the dead, being the truth, for example, or asking him for anything. Okay. Now, if you can prove to me in some capacity that these things that are ascribed to Jesus Christ are just lies, and he never said these things or did these things even in a historical context, I'm then not, sure. I'm not I have no means by which I can disbelieve that Muhammad is not proper anymore. I'm not but understanding how that's going to help you become a Muslim. These, so because Jesus says these things, it means he's God. And then if you can somehow disprove that the things he says are either lies or that they don't mean what I think they mean, so do you, then I have no means by which I can discount Muhammad. So why are you just ignoring all the times that Jesus points to something other than him as the only true God? So he does that, I believe, once or twice. Okay, so and, why are you ignoring it? Uh, well, I'm not ignoring it. I accept it because they You accept are, it? Yes. Okay. What he's simply doing So there, you accept Jesus isn't God then? No, that isn't actually disqualifying as being God. You even can't find that in the Greek. For example, I can pull out a Greek into linear for you right now. And I can so how many gods are there? Pause. You're doing that Muslim thing. No, I'm trying to... You're doing the Muslim thing. You keep talking. So, okay, You fine. keep talking. Okay, so, and you said a lot. Okay. And listen, let man. Me stop I, I, hold on. Yes, please. Let, let, me, let, me, please let me help you out real quick. My first question. Let me help you out real quick. I'm a very simple person. I care about truth. I care about sincere people. I'm not here to argue you. I don't have to prove anything to you. I'm not here to get you to convert to Islam. I'm here to hear your journey. Did you hear your question? The, yeah, your very first question yeah, I, was... My question is, what would help you become anything. a Muslim? So, yes. So, so my you question. You said just now I'm not, that I'm, you don't want to convert me. No, 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 no. I do, about I'm, me. Yeah, I am. I do not want to convert you. I want you to convert yourself. I do not have any bearing on your conversion at all. It's up to you to be intellectually honest, sincere, and ask God the Almighty for guidance. I have nothing more to contribute other than the, sim the simple message of so Islam. What's our That's discussion it. About? Art, a great question. So what I'm more interested in is not sitting over here and pillaring back and forth trying to take little pot shots here and there. You've been through this whole spiel with everybody on Speaker's oh, Corner, man. About that. Okay, I would like to know why you believe what you believe. I'd like to know how did your journey get you there. I'd like to know why you believe it's true. I'd like to know what benefit do people have from following the way that you have. These are all the things that I'm interested in. I'm interested in you as an individual. And you want it simple, right? You have super simple, man. I'm a simple guy. Guy. I, you know, I don't consider myself a scholar by any means. I just like hearing people's journeys out, seeing how we're different, seeing how we're similar. What can we connect on? Because we're all going to the grave. Okay. So what's well, up? If, if, if you if you don't want to debate, then I have to. Change. No, I don't want to debate, man. I have to, I have to change my posture then. Yes, please do. That's so, my that. You, that. You, want to, you want to come over here and chill? Yeah, I'm, I'm down to all chill, right. man. Go ahead. Let's still have a conversation then. Okay. Okay, fine. Bismillah, bro. So apparently we're not debating anymore. We're just talking. No, I, I told sure. you it wasn't a debate from the get-go, okay, man. Fair okay, enough, fair enough. Let's change the posture. All okay. right. Hi, I'm David. How's it going, we man? We met once. Morris, nice you, to meet you. You were talking with Grayson. Okay. Yes, and I came in and, and told him that uh, if you leave this one, you're going to die. And then I got kicked out. Oh, dang. So, All right. Well, that's, awesome. that's, that's anyway, pretty wild. So, I was born into a Christian family. Okay. So, I've been a Christian my whole life. Cool. Had a little moment where I stopped practicing around 19 to about 24. Came back into the faith. Started rediscovering it again as an adult. Okay. Uh, started looking up questions about the faith myself. Okay. Found the corner, came to the corner. Started like having debates because of my lovely friend Mansour. Okay. And things of that nature. Now, why do I believe it's true? Yeah. Well, I'll admit that when I was uh, younger, I just thought we believe because we believe. Okay. When I came back, I found out that it's possible to actually justify the belief. Okay. Give have an evidence for why we believe in the things that Jesus says. Okay. Why we believe in the resurrection. Okay. And what that means for not only ourselves, but everybody else. So, if you come and then possess or present any other questions to me or any other... Yeah, for sure. It can be a nice dialogue. So, yeah. like, you so know... If, um, if any other propositions are brought 
to me around, you know, like maybe Hinduism is the way, yeah. or you know, uh, Judaism or Islam. Yeah. They're gonna have to contend with um, the understanding that I have uh, received from the church. Okay. Cool. Cool. Very cool. So, uh, make sure I have a good understanding. So, basically, born in a Christian family, had a, a really nice journey, picked up the book, started looking into it a little bit more. And you? Uh, so, for myself, uh, I was actually born into a non-practicing Muslim family. So, culturally Muslim, uh, fell into social atheism, uh, reverted to Islam when I was probably about 22 or so. And same thing, I put all the books there, I started reading all the scriptures, I gave everything a fair shot. I approached the issue categorically, so like for example, either one god or many gods, and then categorically I would flush things out. And then I would take a look at certain principles, uh, like things that um, made sense to me that didn't make sense to me. So when I was reading my Bible, uh, it didn't make sense to me that a god would come into a human form, experience death, or need to experience death, and that be the only way for salvation and the reason why it didn't make sense to me is because there was a, a chain of consistency was with all the prophets and the messengers and in a nutshell there was a break in that chain and that break to me was the what I would consider a, a Paulinian Christianity or this you know um, need this uh, atonement or this payment for the purposes of forgiveness and salvation so it didn't sit well with me because I believe in a, in a merciful God that can give that type of mercy, give that type of uh, reward of paradise without actually needing something uh, from himself or anybody else. So that's kind of where I'm at. That's where my journey's at. Um, I fell in love with what Islam had to offer as far as its simplicity, the simplicity of Tawheed. Uh, don't really care to get into any of like the sub, what I would consider like sub issues of Ethity, Eshadi, this, that, and the third. I think that for the benefit of anybody that's listening and for the sharing of our journeys, it wasn't impactful in my journey. So I wouldn't have anything to kind of, uh, you know, highlight. It's not like I had this epiphany moment during these, you know, uh, substrata or sub branch, um, you know, uh, understandings, if you will. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to take any question you might have my way for that. So or I'm happy to. One thing that stood out to me. So sure. when I have these conversations, I pay intense attention okay. to what the person is saying. Yeah. I'm not memorizing every single thing that they're. It's okay, man. I don't have that memory. Well, either. I can have the major points that they talked about. Okay. When you were talking about your journey, opening up all the books, yes. and looking at them categorically, yes. You mentioned two things there yeah. that struck out to me. Cool. Number one is the idea that it doesn't make sense. Yeah. For yeah, God to come and pay the price for human uh, um, lacking in good nature or yeah, yeah, yeah. just bad people being bad because yeah. something doesn't make sense to you mm -hmm. that doesn't then mean it's automatically wrong okay no problem yeah that's fine so did you ever seek the proper understanding yeah. of the atonement yeah absolutely the proper understanding of the crucifixion yeah absolutely and that didn't make sense to me either right so is the problem then the teaching or how you're understanding it i would say the problem is the teaching okay. because i actually made a good faith effort to try to understand what that is so can you for, talk me through it? yeah yeah absolutely so like you would talk to um what, what i would classify as I mean, I guess you can consider them people of knowledge, but maybe not so much, but they're priests, preachers, uh, church folk that you would go. I would sit down, I would have uh, exchanges with them one-on-ones, and I couldn't reconcile certain things. I couldn't reconcile as to how God could die. I couldn't reconcile as to how he was not free from need. I couldn't reconcile as to um, how he would incarnate. I, I couldn't reconcile as to uh, why it was even necessary, right? So to me, I just, when, when you get to a certain point, you kind of start looking at things, okay, how many angles am I really gonna try to look at this at, right? So if I look at like, does it befit his majesty to come down to this creation, you know, the, this world that he, that he created? Does it um, befit his majesty to humiliate one of his prophets or what you would consider as a division of him? I don't wanna call it a division because I don't wanna, I don't wanna we cast don't in, in No, I, I understand and I don't wanna, it's just for simplicity terms, right? Like, uh, I'm not talking about partialism, I'm not talking about anything one like that. One of his persons. Yeah, one of his persons, right? Does it, does it really require for him to do something like that? And um, I personally, I couldn't reconcile that. Want me to answer those for you? 
If you're welcome to present your worldview, absolutely, absolutely, you can definitely do that. Okay. Um, God can do all things that okay. are non-paradoxical or logical. Okay. Right? There's nowhere in the understanding of classical logic that the incarnation does not make sense. Now, you can argue things like, does the incarnation mean that God changes, for example? Okay. Which would contradict him saying many times that he doesn't change, for example. Right, yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah, you have a, a book of Hebrews, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. We say, no, God doesn't change. Okay. The only thing that changes is our reality, that is, you know, within time, and God is outside of it. So, the incarnation is simply, in one sentence, the divine, or God, taking on the nature of something that is temporal. So AKA walk me human. through that, walk, yeah. because I, and let me ask you, so, because these are the hangups that I had, okay. so I, I hope you don't mind, I'm an interruptive Go learner, and if, if my interruption is too much, then you, you, you just let really me know. Simple, right? so yeah, 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 simple. so, okay, so, long speeches. perfect, so, um, you said change, right, yes. so his nature doesn't change, yeah. right, okay, so walk me through that process sure. of what from your worldview, what actually happened? Sure. Okay. Easy. Okay. So, just um, I'm just going to use very, very simple terms. No bit. worries, man. No so, worries. internal and external. Okay. Um, we believe in, in our faith that there are certain things that are external to God and things that are internal. Internal, we would say, are things like the divine nature, okay. the things that make God God, and that is shared completely by the three persons okay. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay. So these are the things that are internal, if you will. Like what's an example? Or something uh, that comes the, to your mind? The nature and the three persons. But what would be something that's shared? Just so I can understand. The divine when, nature. Oh, the divine nature. Okay, yeah. cool, 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 cool. Shared equally by all three. Got so it. So that would mean that everything that applies for the Father and terms of divinity applies for the Son too. Got it. And then there are things that are external. Okay. The creator universe. Okay. Because God isn't bound by time or space, but cool. the universe is. Yeah. So when the universe comes into being, there is no change internally in God. Okay. Simply there was nothing outside of God, and now there is. So the change has only appeared outside of God. Okay. The same exact principle with the incarnation. Okay. No change in God. Okay. But now there is a human, um, like a, a human form or a, or a human nature, okay. that is now also bound to the divine nature. And that doesn't represent a change in the divine nature, only a change in the human nature. It wasn't there, then suddenly it is there. Okay, cool. So the human nature is created, and you're saying it's bound to this body, right? Yeah, so, so as, as all, all human beings, you have human nature, right? Okay. Nature are just things that we can attribute to a kind of existence. Okay, okay. The nature of a tree yes. is that it can go through like the biological life processes or whatever. Yes. But it doesn't talk, for example. It doesn't reason. Wonderful. Wonderful. Human beings have a similarity. We go through the processes of life as well. Okay. But we can reason and talk. talk okay. Talk God. Okay, so let's, let's continue on with that okay. contemplation. So... The way, so here's my understanding of it. When you tell me that there is an incarnation and that there is a, now a human nature and it's next to a divine nature, the way that my brain understands it is it went from three to four. So you had three divine natures and you had one human nature. So okay? there's and if, only one divine nature. Okay. Yeah. And I, I'm not understand. I, I, that's that's so fine if there's one divine nature. Remember initially I was telling you that the things that are within God are the divine nature mm -hmm. and the three persons. Okay. And the three persons <laughs> share completely in the divine nature. So there's okay. only one divine nature. Okay. But now you've added a human nature. Yes. And so as part of the Godhead. Okay, so as part so, of the so is the human not. nature internal? Uh, no. Is it internal or external Only to the external. Godhead? Okay, so how did you how did you come to that conclusion? Like how um, did you? Because it is a part of the created order, which is all external. I, I, I'm still not understanding how you actually now attribute that. So, like, let me give you an example. Uh, how would you know when Jesus is acting like a human being and when he's acting like right. a divine? So, so we um, I, I know you might have you might have heard different kinds of argumentation around this, right? But I think the simpler explanation is actually better. So, natures are not the things that act. So, when we're having this conversation, we're not having it via our human nature. We're having it by the properties of our nature. So, for example, our, our ability to get, like, have intellect and communicate. So, you are a person who has a nature, but it is your person who is having the conversation mm -hmm. or doing the action. Okay, so, so let me ask you then. When, when, 
we can say it's via his divine nature or via his human nature but we don't really say that oh like he's, he's waking up oh that's the human nature waking up or he's going to bed that's the divine nature doing it the person is committing the actions mm -hmm. but then the natures by which they can draw from to do so can be different depending upon the action yeah and i'm saying that you're gonna have to attribute it to one or the other and the reason being is because when you're talking to me it's not your speech that's accruing the sin it's you as a person that's accruing the sin if you're doing something bad right so like if you yourself are going out committing crimes you don't go oh my hand did that okay. you you say i did that sure. your hand is not going to go to court you are going to go to court sure. so what i'm saying is you actually have to attribute it to one nature uh, no, one, one or the other. For, and to be simple, not necessarily. So, for well, example, you stab me. Yeah. Right? You stab me mm -hmm. with your hand. Yeah, absolutely. It wasn't with, with your toe. Right? Absolutely. So, in the same capacity, we can attribute any actions that Jesus does to the person of Jesus. How? For example, Jesus walked on water. Yeah. The ability to do so was given by his divine nature. Yeah, but, but, his, but his person consists of two. So, uh, it was it, divine. It one person and then, two yeah, that's that's my point. Yeah. My my point is now you have to reconcile that. So you have to reconcile what. Yeah, but that doesn't solve the issue. It it doesn't. I'm I'm telling you, when is he doing one and when is he doing the other? So for example, look, I can let's go. No problem. Let me give you a critical point. So here's the critical junction. But you asked two questions. So you asked the first one, then you asked the second one. No, I'm continuing on with the first one. So when is he? Yeah, that's still a continuation. Sure. And I'll, I'll bring it to the critical junction. Okay. So when it comes to atonement, when it comes to self-sacrifice for the purposes of atonement, is his divine nature taking it upon the sin or is his human nature taking the sin? Right. So nature is going to do things, person is doing Yeah, and I'm trying to tell you his person consists of two natures. Okay, so now... If his person is taking on the sin, his personhood consists of, did you basically, here, I'm gonna get to, just cut to the chase. Did a human being die or uh, yeah. did, did God die? Uh, so, so God died, yes. Okay, so God died, so the divine nature died? No. Okay, see, no. see, this is what I'm so, saying. So don't it's difficult that. to, no. so God yeah. God dies on the cross, right? And that's why I'm gonna say that. And the reason we can say that is because nature is one of the things that perform actions, people do. So what when, what makes a person huh? when you say oh, I don't mean to cut you off person, again But you're saying terms so, that are interchangeable. Uh, so when you so say the, people the natures and people are not interchangeable. So for example that tree has a nature but it's not a person Okay, but yeah. this person is a human being sure. so human being like, consists yeah, of human a being. human nature That's correct, yes. And now you're saying this person is a divine being and that brings me back to the original point yeah. Because the issue is you Jesus. don't know who took on the sin, the human being or the divine being. If you're saying the divine being took on the sin, in my mind's eye, a divine being can't die. Okay. And you're saying God died. Yep. Okay, and right. I'm, I, I'm having a difficulty reconciling sure, that. Sure. Okay, okay. And so again, I will reiterate that okay. when an action is committed, it is not done by nature, it's done by a, by a person. So, Jesus, we can say, is a divine person. And this is describe what a person is, something that exists that has intellect and will. Okay. That's how come you can't call, like, you know, a cat's a person, right? So, so there's, if I'm understanding yeah. you correctly, there's two wills. Yes, two wills. Oh, you have a human will and a divine Absolutely. will. Absolutely. Inside one person. Yes. Interesting. Yep. And, and then... That can only be done by God. Okay. So, and why do you say that? Huh? Why do you say um, that? No, no, why do you say there's two wills? I'm sorry, just to uh, clarify, uh, why do you say there's two because wills? Because wills are things that are proper to a nature. So when you have a human nature, you also have a human will and by the with a divine nature. Okay, great. So if there was two natures and two wills, yep. which will and which nature was praying to the Father? Right. So we, we say that, for example, when he talks to the Father, right? Um, he talks to the Father uh -huh. by his person, not by his will. And I think that's something you keep mixing up. The person is doing the action, not the will doing the action. But brother, you told me that um, there's two natures, yep. two wills. Yep. One of those wills had to have a volition to actually conduct the action to pray. Okay. Okay. And I'm asking you, which one of those is it? Right. It can't be neither, and you can't say person, because then you're gonna say both of them have the same will. Right. Now so, you're gonna run into an issue where the human will and the divine will are one, and you just told me they're two. Uh, no, not that, that they're one. Simply because you agree with something doesn't make you one. We can have the same opinion on, on for example, our favorite snack, but that doesn't mean, mean that, 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 we, that we, have, uh, we have the same person. 
Oh, we, thanks, we, we, we simply agree with something uh, that, that uh, we simply agree with a topic that's external to ourselves. Yeah, so I think that's a tough. To, prayer, it's a tough analogy, man, because it, it we're not. Be because prayer. So, for example, there are things that you can do as a Muslim that align with the will of Allah, right? But that's yeah. what you and Allah are one. So yeah, but that, I can never do anything against the will. Well, you, you can. No, you can't. You can it's not possible. We, okay, well, no, 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 it's within his will for us to sin. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. That, that's problematic in a, in a completely different way, but, but we'll, we'll I don't get see into how, that. but okay, yeah, we can. Well, basically, I if, I, if I like, so, oh, okay. It's not no, problematic, bro. It, it's, it's very just, problematic, depending on I don't, how, I don't how see you how. interpret it. Okay. So, to make it very simple, Okay. are you saying that if Allah does not will a thing to occur, mm -hmm. it cannot occur? It will occur. never happen. It will never happen, ever. And see, this is why I love so, about being sincere and like, so just, I, I don't like, and I love this conversation right. because now we're actually making beautiful progress. It so, can never happen. So, if I kill you right now and start it was within eat, his will. eating your innards, it was within his will. Allah wanted me to do that. No, 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 not wants. What he wants and what he willed is completely different. See, this is the thing. When you will some, when you're, when you're, talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will, it's all the possibilities of what can happen. Right now, you could literally gouge my eyes out, do all the you know weird things. Uh, not saying that that's going to happen, man, but hypothetically. I, 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 hypothetically, that's all within his will. But like, let me give you a very concrete example. Can you jump 10 feet in the air right now? No, without some kind of assistance. Exactly. So it is within his will that you cannot do it without some assistance. It's it's as simple as that. So you're, you're, the way I'm interpreting this, what you're calling Allah's will is just possibilities. Yeah, absolutely. If it's if it's outside of His will, it's not in the realm of possibility. So I His mean, His. There's a, a better uh, way of, of, of describing that. Why? Why need outside why? Of, of His will? Yeah. Because it's actually uh, at least from a Christian position, right? We say that will is something akin to like um, ability to action a thing. Mm -hmm. Right. So it, the way you were describing it at first, I assumed you were saying that the things that occur are decreed by Allah to occur in that way. So if I yes. was to eat you, that's because Allah wanted me to do so. No, no, no. But not you're want. implying that effectively Allah's will is just a, a, uh, a infinite number when, of uh, potential actions yes. that a person can do. Yes. So when you say want, you're you're adding the element of desire in there. And that's not okay. Allah has nothing to desire? I, I, I can't, I'm not going to use that type of language. Okay. So like, I don't know what's in his, so like, for example, did he want to create? Yes, because we're here. He had a choice of create, not create, sure. and we're here. So I can comfortably say he wanted to create. Okay. But if, uh, if uh, he wills for something to happen, it's within the realm of possibility of it happening. Now you have a choice. So what he wanted was for you to have a choice. And it's it, otherwise you're just gonna say, "Hey, life is completely useless, and it's we have no choice." And uh, Some it's, it's, are it's, occasionalists, and that's what they believe. Yeah, I'm a compatibilist, man. I, I think that you know, uh, he gives us all these possibilities. He gives us guidance towards good. I think the more good that you do, the consequences is more good and, and better guidance, stronger guidance, tougher exam. You know, to stay on top of the dean, to stay on top of the truth. Like for example, when somebody does perpetually good, like let's say for example, when I think of like Surat Al-Fatiha, right? And when we recite that, uh, you're asking to be on the Sirat Al-Mustaqeem, right? The righteous path. But to me, when you're reciting the Quran, you're being elevated. So you're trying to get closer to God. And the more of the Quran that you know, the more of the teachings of Islam that you know, you have more to lose if you start to go on the opposite end. So for example, if you end up murdering somebody, God forbid, or you end up falling off the bandwagon, you are going to fall a great distance compared to someone that just now accepted Islam and is making a, a mistake of ignorance or a mistake of something that they're, you know, like a cardinal mistake that just didn't quite hit their head. So my point being is the more knowledge that you have, you're going to be held to that different standard of account. And the more guidance is given to you by the will of Allah, but also your test is increased because the more you have to refrain from doing things. So all of that is within his realm of possibility. All of that is within his will, but the choice is yours. So is there some kind of compatibilism between Allah's will and what he wants? So it's like, the what creation. Do you 
What do you mean? He oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. He tells us in the Quran he wants us that, to do good. But before that, he wills to create. He doesn't yeah. want to create, then will so. He will so and then doesn't, right? No, I think, so what's, what happens is classically, I think this is a human thing. It's not even like a Christian thing or anything like that. I think as human beings, we tend to look at things like linearly, like he was here and then went there. I don't think that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works in that framework. Like to put it simply, I don't think he has to think about creating and then he creates because he knows all possible outcomes and all possibilities. And like you said, he's not time bound, he's not space bound, and he's looking at things both all from past, present, and future. So it's really like tough to use that language. Rather, um, so that's why I don't like to say, oh, he willed it first, then he took the action, or he thought well, about it, it first, and then like he- Logically speaking, because for us, we can say that, for example, we believe in two main processions in okay. God. The procession of, of the uh, of the will, sorry, of the intellect, okay. and then the procession of the will. Okay. So that, and that's, that's what we call the sun and the spirits. Okay. And okay. the reason why, logically speaking, we say that the sun emanates and then the spirits, despite okay. them not being bound by time, yeah. is that logically speaking, before you can will something, you have to know things. Okay. So the intellect comes and then the will. See, I, I see what you're saying. So in that sense, in creation. I totally see what you're saying. I would say that you have to take it even a step further, that you have to will the knowledge first before the will to existence. You understand what I'm saying? How and it's going to get way deep. You don't know anything. But because you have to start somewhere, there has to be an I, an I what, so for mean, lack of a better word. Come first and then the will see, see because this because is why. Know all the possible worlds. Yeah, and that's why I'm saying it's not appropriate for us to step into what God's mind is because we simply don't know. Well, God's mind is logical. We have to agree with that. Yeah, but logic to what standards? If you're logic in this realm and then you go to logic in the quanta realm, it's completely different. So right. logic in his realm is befitting his majesty. Right. And I can't speak to that because I'm not in that realm. Right. So logic in the I just, quantum realm doesn't get thrown away suddenly. It there changes. Are, well, no, there's just different assertions that we have to make in the quantum realm. For example, like things that are paradoxical. Yeah, you would consider them illogical in yes, this realm. Right? And the logic changes over there. But You've seen the matrix, right? Yes. Yeah, so it's part of the quantum realm. You're just like, there's no way a guy could be bending bullets and dodging things at light speed. Well, he, he could if like gravity works differently, but that, that's what, but that's what I'm saying. That's the logic, the laws. Because we, we already know that in different parts of the universe, gravity works differently. Yeah, but, but I, I'm trying to it's tell you, logical. it's, I'm trying to, uh, what I'm trying to say is to hypothesize what's in his realm, it, there's no benefit for me. There's no benefit for you either. It's, so, it, it, it would be like, me trying to get into your head, I can't, I can't even do that, man. So, Let alone like to get into God's head, for lack of a better word. You've heard you know? about like the paradox of the rock. Can God make a rock so heavy you can't lift? Blah 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 blah. Sure, yeah, it's a silly thing. question. But. Right, but then like the way that you're you're putting this, it's almost possible that maybe if you believe in like different uh, degrees of logic based upon what dimension you're in, then I can say it could be possible that within Allah's dimension, He can do that. No, because. Uh, what we're, you have like assumptions and certain presuppositions. Like for example, if we go with the rock but can't lift, you're assuming that there's physical strength involved. You're assuming that the rock is made of some type of a material form that you're familiar with. You're assuming that uh, up is up, you know, and it can just keep going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. There's all these, like it, you're assuming that the rock has a molecular composition, like an atomic mass. You're assuming all these things. So it's, Within it's, Allah's realm, I don't know. know. I don't speak of it. Well, for I just example, don't. we have the scriptures of it. There's yeah. water. There's a throne. Yeah. So again, whatever, it's not like it's whatever, not like our water. Sure, sure. So, so whatever, whatever reality the water on the throne has, I'm gonna imagine the rock has the same reality. Yeah, but you don't know what the what reality the water has. That's fine. And so, so that's why we can't imagine the rock. Is, well, well, no, we, we can imagine a rock, right? But How? A, a rock with I'm gonna say a rock with similar properties to what the, the arch of the throne has. I can't I can't speak I can't speak to that because now what you're saying is tell me about the composition of the throne and I just don't oh, know. No, I, I'm not asking for it. I, I'm just saying that I am not appealing to things that are necessarily physical. But there are things in heaven or within the Islamic concept that at least sound in some sense to be physical. But if, even if they're okay. metaphysical thrones, okay. can there be a metaphysical rock that Allah can't lift? If he no, has I get, a different I creation of logic than we do. I don't use that type of language, bro. Because like, just it's... No, no, I... There's no point in going that way. Because so then, I'm saying, like, it's not going to change. 
it's not going to change what's required of me by God on what I'm capable of doing. Like for example, it would be silly for him to set that type of a requirement to obtain that type of knowledge when he himself in the Quran says that when it comes to that realm, the realm of souls, I, he only he knows. So the requirement is, well, alhamdulillah, removed. Yeah, but the scripture also gives certain parameters, right? So like, for example, what you're talking about is things that are in the hadith and things that are within the Quran. But then both of those contain parameters, brother. So when they contain those parameters, he tells us at certain points, stop. Otherwise, you're just going to be going off of conjecture. And I'm saying that there's no benefit to either you or me to talk about the conjecture, the conjecting elements. Like it's cool, it's cool because we have that, that, you know. Ever put on the phone. It is, it is, it 100% is. It, I don't he's, think so. Yeah, it is. Nowhere does he say, hey, you need to know what the throne is. But Nowhere. he also doesn't say, don't question the throne either. I mean, yeah, because he, he the, but so. he tells us not to question the realm of souls, and if that belongs in that realm, then what? He said you gave us but a little bit of knowledge. Well, so in, in the in the divine cosmology of Islam, okay, the throne is above the heavens. Yeah, but it, okay, so what? So it's it's not it's not actually contained within the realm of souls. Now, how do you know that? Because you don't know that. The idea is that Allah sits above His throne. Okay, so which is above the water, which is above the created order. Yeah, you're gonna have to prove that. That's you're, not, that's, meaning, that's no, you're gonna have to prove that it's not within the realm of souls. You're gonna have to prove all well, of. Um, and, and I'm if, saying. If it was within the realm of souls. Yeah. Remember earlier when you agreed with me that God is in time bound. The realm of souls is within the created order. The, so again. You're conflating this material, terrestrial, no, 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 created. No, no, no. Now, again, I understand what you're trying it's to created. say. You're trying to say that it is created, and yes, yeah. absolutely. The only thing uncreated is the Creator Himself. Okay. And the, so, and the Quran, well, again, you're gonna don't do this, bro, because okay. this is not. This is not. We can go down that route, bro, but you're just gonna end up like all, all these other conversations where they're regurgitated. And like I said, I care about your journey and I care about you as a human being and I care about being upon truth. No, I, I, I think we, we're having a beneficial conversation, but I'm saying like, ask questions as to, you know, that, that things that you can actually, like for example, um, things that would get you closer to the creator on what he actually revealed. Like I, I, I think, I think that's where I'm the conversation. Alhamdulillah, bro. I yeah. love him as my prophet, as my messenger. I love him as the Messiah to the Jews. I love him yeah. as, you know, he's. Uh, I love him as a truth speaker. I love him as a, as a, an example for the people of their time. I I, I love Jesus, bro, and um, I'm glad you do too. So I'm glad we have this thing in common. What do you love about him? I love what he taught. I love that he taught that there's only one Creator. I love that he attributed that. John 17, 3, that was, that's probably, when I was reading the Bible, that was the most impactful verse to me. Have you ever read John 17, 1 to 10? Yeah, I have. I've and read, I've what read. Did you, what did you think about what that? I, what I did notice when I read the book of John, bro, is I noticed that there was ample times that Jesus was called a prophet. So these, are, yeah, it, it is fine. So now, but so. You know, you, I can call you like a man. Yeah. Is that all you are? Yeah, if you might it, be a husband, or a father, right? There's contextually speaking, exactly. contextually speaking, what was going on during these verses? And I'm not going to explore like every single verse you right now. Should, actually. Well, there's no need for me to. Do you want to look at John 17? Again. I think it's important. What would you like to look at well, about in, it? In verse 5, he talks about um, having pre existent glory with the Father. Great. We, 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 all the prophets had pre existing glory. How All does that work when they don't pre-exist? They do pre-exist. You so so for example, um, you know when it says that he created God in His image. Okay, the way that I understand that. Created God in uh, his excuse image me, or created man and excuse. Thank you for that. Uh, he created man in His image. I view that as he created man as in His imagery, meaning that God. And again, I'm not imposing this. This is just my human understanding. Is that he has a mind. He has the ability to. Um, think like volition. He has the ability to conjure whatever he wills, right? And part of that is the imagery of man. Two arms, two legs, two ears, a nose, two eyes, some hair, sometimes lacking, you know? Mashallah, you got good hair. So I'm a little jealous, we'll man. See. We'll see. But uh, my point being is that 
they were all, and even you, were in pre-existence, in his imagery, in his knowledge. So you were sent at a particular time, which is today, right? Today you would be X years old and you'd be living X life. But in his knowledge, you always existed. So I don't think that's a good idea. Okay, so if that's the case, then you would have to prove how God is not all knowledgeable okay. because you had to have been in his knowledge bank, knowledge bank, just for the s simple terms, and then you were manifested in time. So simple terms. God doesn't have a knowledge bank. Okay, right? so what has he got? So the, this is another problem with, within uh, the Islamic understanding of God's knowledge, right? Because the problem okay. is within Islam, guys give a lot the opportunity to learn new things. No, we don't. Uh, you, you do, actually. There's a, there's a very popular argument about Surah 3, um, verse 140, where, where it says that Allah may know, or, or, or um, it's, it's rendered in a few other ways, but one of the ways is Allah may know. The, the term is, I think, like, like a, a Wali Yama or something, is, is the idea. And there have been arguments about how Allah's knowledge works as a result of that verse. I don't hold that position. I hold the position that he's all knowledgeable at all times. Meaning what exactly? He, that there's, there is no, there is no thing that he doesn't know of, that he's not aware of, or possibility that he doesn't know of, or he's not aware of at any time. Yeah, how, how could you be all knowledgeable and learn? That would just be silly, man. Okay, well, I just, I, I think, that'd be I, at least for me, you know, I'm like, Fair enough. That sounds nuts. Fair, I, I can show you some Quranic verses if you want to see where Allah sort of talks in this slightly ambiguous way. Like when he, when he talks to Moses and tells him, go to Pharaoh, perhaps he might listen. You know, perhaps to us sounds like yeah, maybe. But brother, that's rhetoric. That's, rhetoric. That's a, yeah, it's a form of rhetoric when he's saying, so like for example, um, imagine if I, let, let's say when you read that, when you say that, I think of, you'll see. I already know, but you'll see. But, so, so perhaps the, the issue with that is um, that is a almost Americanized English expression. That's funny, man. Does it exist in like ancient Arabic? Yeah, think about that. That's Does a question. That's a question for you, not for me, because I don't have an issue with it. Well, you're, so like, you're, you're in so for example, like um, in the Bible, right, or uh -huh. even in the Quran, we have that term of um, like uh, the rich man. Oh, it's, it's more difficult for a rich man to Oh, yeah, to, to get to the eye. Yeah, 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 yeah. Camel, yeah, yeah. We yeah. don't use that term anymore. We use things like, oh, when hell freezes over or when pigs fly. Right, 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 right. right. So yeah. how do you know <laughs> that, that yeah. perhaps in the Arabic is rendered in the same way as you yeah. see? Yeah, because um, you have to look at it comprehensively, right? So like if you hold the position that he's all knowledgeable, then by default, it will, it will give you that context cue. So... If you understand and accept that he cannot learn anything more, there would be no other alternative by default. That's how I would view it, bro. It, it just simply taking the, that position of like, because if you can add to a cup, then it's, it's, it, it's in need of something. It's, it's, not, it's not fully pure. It's not fully, you know what I'm saying? And it, what, you, know, what, you know what I mean? What I would then do is like, for, for lack of, of, of uh, time, I would encourage you to have a look at the debates okay. around Surah Al Al Imran, okay. verse 140. Inshallah, and, and bro. You, you, you'll see the, uh, you push the again, you just see it around. But okay. people do debate this around oh, what God's knowledge is. So for yeah. us, we hold that God is pure acts. Okay. Right? So God doesn't have any potential, right? He okay. doesn't have any past or any future. Okay. And when he looks at his creation, he looks at it all in one glance. Okay. So effectively, uh, past, present, and future are in his purview all at once. Cool. Yeah, and, that sounds great. And, and his knowledge isn't one where it can increase or decrease. That sounds because great. Because in all possible worlds, we hold that God knows things that are created by understanding the form of the thing without actually becoming the thing. That's, that sounds right? great. Yeah, that, to, that's great, man. I don't believe... So when you just talk now about pre-existing in the knowledge bank of God, we don't hold that because that, that, that ascribes that there was some passage of time before we were actualized that God had us uh, in, in, in his thinking before he made us and we don't hold that. Yeah, so... Uh, so that, that's why that's when, interesting. when I said with Jesus, right? That he has pre-existing glory with the Father. Okay. Pre-existence okay. implies without creation. 
So a couple things come to mind, and, and so you, you really, um, you know, God bless you for, so for, for that, bro. So, so check this out, uh, a couple things. Uh, one, if you hold to the view that he doesn't need to uh, take form of a creation to either have to an experience, to right? understand it, right? Yeah. Then uh, if that's the case, then he would never have to take human form. So he doesn't take human form to understand us. Uh -huh. He takes human form to redeem us. Right. So uh, let, me, let, me, let me put a clarifying nuance on there. He would not have to take human form to understand sin and how to rectify it. No, he doesn't take okay. human form to understand sin either. He takes human beings, uh, sorry, human form okay. for the express purpose okay. of, of saving us from sin. So yeah. th there is no necessary like learning of the mission uh, when he's here on earth. He already comes with the understanding of the mission. Okay. So he's not learning anything to help him on the mission. Okay. So curious then, why didn't he do that? earlier to the previous generations, if your position is that yep. the way that he understands sin yep. is to actually... Redeem our human nature. Yeah, in, 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 yeah. Uh, but through uh, incarnation and sacrifice. Sure. So, so the, for the sacrifice portion, uh -huh. um, like I talked about earlier actually, when you talked about reading, for example, the Torah and yeah. seeing the consistency. Uh, with sacrifice in the New Testament. Okay. The Torah is all about sacrifice. Uh, uh, the Levitical laws talk endlessly about different weekly, daily, monthly... Yeah, but not human sacrifices. Sacrifice. Right. So we're not saying... That, uh, Jesus. That's why we, we talk about Jesus in this motif. Okay. Of him being a lamb. Okay. Or the sacrificial lamb. Okay. Or Passover lamb, right? Okay. Now, spiritually, what we, we told in Christianity that the things that happen physically in the Old Testament have like a spiritual rectifying in the new. That's the explanation behind Jesus saying, I have not come to abolish the law, okay. but to fulfill it. Okay, great. So fulfillment great. means completion. The law is pointing towards a savior and salvation, first with the Jews, and then as Abraham was promised, his descendants, the Jews, would be a light to all the nations. Okay. And all would come to worship the true God because of the promise that God had made to Abraham. Got it, got it. So got it's it. Abraham, the Jewish people, and the rest of the world. Okay. That's how it works, right? So But why did he change? Huh? So why did he change the way that he actually delivers right. the redemption? Because so before it used to be animal sacrifice, because, then it changed to human. Yeah. And now let me add this caveat as well. If you read the book of Ezekiel, yeah. the third temple is going to be built. Yeah. And then Jesus is going to be actually offering sacrifice for himself. I don't so know why did it go? Uh, why I'm not going to mess with you on that. If like, you bring that up, no, no, no. I'm, we, we, feel free. Check yeah. out. Uh, I think it's Ezekiel 44 does it say um, and the Lord onward. Will sacrifice for the Lord? Yes, it does. That's okay. the issue. And so, but here's the here's what I would rather. Right. Uh, I'm not going to stick well, on that. I kind of want to finish that. Finish Please. The whole but it went from animal to human, yeah. back to animal. Why? If he already understood sin, why would he now all of a sudden need to change how he's getting rid of it? If you have a citation for the book, I can read it for you. Yeah, Ezekiel, you book four, uh, it's chapter 44 onwards. I want to say it's like from 44 to... We can have a I'll get it for you. No problem, but, but no problem. The understanding is that there is a, in the New Testament, you're seeing these things fulfilled spiritually. So what you're, what you're having there isn't necessarily just a mere human sacrifice. What you're having is the, the lamb mentioned in the Old Testament being fulfilled in the person of, of uh, Christ, who is a person okay. of God. And so because the lamb only offers um, what you would call like um, temporal bereavement of, of sin, mm. there's weekly, monthly, annual sacrifices that have to be done on a recurring basis. The Lamb of God, Jesus, is a final and ultimate sacrifice, mm. right? The sacrificing of the Son, similar to the mm. motif of the binding of Isaac, right, for right, example, right. in the Old Testament. Right. So that's why you're seeing that. And the thing that's being done there is the need to repair a broken human nature. Okay. It was perfect for what it was supposed to do in the beginning. So God is perfect in a way that God is perfect in. And human beings were made perfect in a manner that would allow their nature to fulfill the telos or the purpose of what God made them to do. We lost that perfection, that human perfection. And since we've lost it, that's why the world suffers and that's why we make each other suffer. 
So what is promised to us is that this will be rectified at some stage. But well, why would they, Romans. If, if he was the last lamb then, why would they rebuild the temple and then continue the sacrifices so, for the purposes so of sin? remember how Jesus in the New Testament uh, says to the disciples that knock this temple down and I will rebuild it in three days, or I will raise it again in three days. So we actually hold that the physical temple being talked about in the Old Testament is actually spiritually fulfilled in Christ. So Christ is the temple people will come to, to worship at. <clears throat> but he himself is gonna be making sacrifices for himself as well. Right, so you're reading it in a literal sense. No, it's what it's, are, well that's what it says. Well, there, are what... Many, there are many things that are said literally in the Old Testament that have a spiritual fulfillment. So we have like multiple ways in which we uh, understand Old Testament prophecy. Some are literal, yes. But some can be moral, they can be analogical. But this is New Testament, man. This is Ezekiel. Yeah, yeah, so, okay, for example, let me give you, let me give you an example, right? So, Moses in the wilderness at one point lifts up a serpent, okay. a bronze serpent, right? To heal the Israelites because they have been cursed with serpents by God okay. for turning their backs on God while they were in the desert, right? Okay. Now, this sounds like, okay, fine, so it's some weird, like, what, like pagan stuff? No, 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 yeah, stuff, yeah, right? yeah, for sure, yeah. Actually, right. funny enough, that's the reason why you have the snake yeah. on the back of ambulances. It's just yeah. a story. Yeah. Now, Jesus in the New Testament tells us that until the Son of Man is lifted up, like Moses picked up the serpents in the wilderness, then those who look upon him will be healed and achieve eternal life. In the same way that people looked upon the serpent in the wilderness and were healed. So you have these two like random events, or one random event, and it being somehow supposed to fulfilled in the new. So Jesus, for example, is not a bronze serpent. Okay, so was was there but a fulfillment the then? It's put on him on the crucifixion. Right, and, and, and I'm fine with that. I understand yep. that from your worldview. Yep. And now, continuing on with that, yep. if it was fulfilled, yep. why rebuild the temple right. and why so, continue the sacrifices so, for the purposes of removal of sin? So what because I, it was already fulfilled. So what, what I would say now yeah. is, again, I haven't read the verse. It's okay, but, no problem. It's, it a, sounds, it's a great one where we can continue I'll, our... I'll check it out. Yeah, For great. what it sounds like to me, yep. I can argue that this is fulfilled okay. in number one, the death of Jesus, okay. the resurrection, okay. aka the building of the third temple, okay. and the sacrifice that he's committing in in, in, what in Ezekiel, okay. is the sacrifice he made on the cross. Okay, so, so no, it specifically way. says that he's going to sacrifice a bull for, so it's going to be, that, and that was my original question, yep. is why is it going from animal to personhood, I'll respect that from your worldview, personhood, all the way back to animal. And that's the that's the contention that I, I have. I think the issue is you're, you're, you're literalizing that because, for example, but well, that's what it says. So Christians, for example, don't hold that a third temple structure is required. For example, so then you're going that, against the the Bible. Well, we're not going against it. We we have proper understanding of what that, that terminology means. So in Luke 24, 27, okay, Jesus um, is shown to unroll the Torah or Tanakh for his disciples. And he gives them, in the Greek, he gives them the proper interpretation of what these things mean. So where is your reading it and looking for a literal one-to-one -one with what is in Ezekiel? Often there are many things in Ezekiel that are hi hyperbolic. Yeah, for but example, I'm not. I'm talking Alcoholics. about the crystal clear text. Right. It has no ambiguity to it whatsoever. Well, and then it says me. that it will... It will, he will sacrifice yep. for himself as right. well. So and that me, means he's not sinless. Tell me why that has to be uh, fulfilled physically. When I'm the, giving you examples of things that are physical how would a and bull, spiritual. How would a bull not be physical? So if a bull represents, uh -huh. for example, a sacrifice for the atonement of sin in accordance with the Levitical law. Yeah, but they physically sacrifice them. And then spiritually? Yeah, spiritually they were hoping to reap the reward. Is then, uh, yeah, they showcased in the New Testament yeah, but as a different action. Yeah, so that my, my point being is the physical act was still conducted. And then the spiritual reward was sought after, right? I mean, that's the whole point, right? In you the know? old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The new, yeah, right. So the this action is a new. Isn't required all right, all right. For so example, I, think about it. Uh, the Gentiles, right, are not uh, forced to sacrifice animals to God if they don't want to. Yeah, but understand, he's going to, when they rebuild that temple, he is the high priest. So he is going to be the one that is going to be standing at the sepulcher, and he is going to be saying, 
this is the sacrifice, and he is going to be sacrificing a particular thing. But Jesus himself is the temple. No. Yeah. He is the... Sure, no. Sure to you. Okay, and I think this is where we have a difference, okay. um, which again, I'm so happy to have that difference what, of opinion. What did Jesus mean when but he, he said, how is he physically going to be in the temple if he is the temple? Exactly. Right? Okay, so, so there that, has to be a high priest. No, he is the high priest forever. No. Right? You're, but you're, what you're doing is you're. There's no physical structure. I'm going to tell you why. That, 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 that's, that's, that's I'm going to tell you why you need to look into it, and this is with all due respect, okay. because in Ezekiel it actually talks about a physical structure. And tell me why. Tell me why that can be fulfilled in a spiritual way. It, it, uh, what do you mean by in a spiritual way? So a, a, because a, 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 a there needs to be a high... Way. Okay, because when you read the text clear as day, okay. a physical high priest will be there. Otherwise, there's no point in rebuilding the temple. How are you going to rebuild the temple if Jesus was the temple? How are you going to rebuild Jesus? Oh, so that happens when he dies and resurrects. No, I understand. Which is why he says, knock this temple down okay. and I will raise it again. So who's the bull? So the, the bull is, is a sacrifice. And, and it's a physical Jesus, sacrifice. And Jesus himself was the sacrifice on the cross. No, so he you're, 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 you're blending the two, brother. And that's how, how, how we are I understand. To you're, but you're tradition. blending. You're blending the two. Well, there, it was a tradition a at a reason. point. I did. Why it has to be I did. I did because. So what you're doing is you're painting the text, and you're saying the text is implying a physical building. So why am I not? No, it's concrete. It's not even. It's not implying. It's. It is. It like, legitimately saying that it is going to be a temple. It is going to have pillars. Okay. So so, for example, let's table that for just a second. You believe in a second coming, right? So is the second co is Jesus still the temple? Yes. How are they going to rebuild them? So that's what's really happened. Okay, but there's a second coming. Yep. So why would they be building that physical temple if the second coming is happening? So, funny, and then who's the bull? Funny enough, actually. So this is where no, it gets convoluted. No, notice that it's not Christians attempting to build a second temple. You <laughs> might have some. No, it's fine. You, you might have some radical American evangelists, but <laughs> it's a Jewish. Why are you being on the Americans, man? Give them a break. I, I'm not. I'm We're in London. <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm just saying. So you might have some Jews, for example. Okay. Who want to like what you're essentially doing, fulfill the prophecy yeah, okay. physically. Yeah. Right? But then there's a problem with like they're not really having But they don't believe in the New Testament. No, no, exactly. Right? So it's Ezekiel New Testament. No, they don't care about what Ezekiel says. Old, but you're asking me a question, why are they building a third temple? The reason is they are literalizing it in the way you want. That's why. Okay. Because they lack the context of the New Testament. Okay. That's why. Okay. Cool. And oh, by the way, if you read Ezekiel, I remember if you listen to Ezekiel, right? Ezekiel is like a very like um, it's it's a very like spiritual book because a lot of the things that he sees in his visions, right, are like literally out of this world. Like look up Ezekiel's wheels, for example, if you want to have a interesting read on, on that. In one of the verses, it talks about these wheels that come out of heaven that are on fire, and the wheels have eyes, and the wheels intersect with other. Yeah, wheels. that can all be very metaphoric, and that oh, can all be very so like. Why is that metaphoric? But the temple isn't because you're you're asking for something that can actually be a physical structure and then you're asking for well, why like, can't wheels of fire come out come out of the sky well, what, what stuff does that happen? well they they can yeah. yeah they can there's there's nothing and, stopping and also, it from I, happening I in Ezekiel, he describes like the coming of like the new kingdom and in the New Kingdom, he describes these like uh, gemstones that are on the floor, like paved in the entire floor. Yeah, okay. Do you expect that when the New Kingdom comes, there will be like legitimate gemstones like on the floor? I don't it, know. It, they it, could it, be. It could be a metaphor for, yeah, oh wow, be. it will be shiny and grand. Right? It could be. Yeah. Yeah, it very well could be. So we understand that in the Bible, not everything is meant to be uh, read literally. Because, for example, yeah. like in the, in the Old Testament in the Psalms, um, God is called like a rock and a shield, right? Mm -hmm. And like a mighty man of war. Yeah, I don't think he's a rock or a shield or a mighty man. And then we understand. You know? Yeah, one hundred percent. One hundred percent. I got no issue with that. Okay. I've got, I've got, I've got so no issue with that. We have basically means by which or hermeneutical if it, if it, if sure. means of interpretation sure. that we use for the purposes of the Bible, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yes, we can make up our own, but it's better, in my personal opinion, if some of these interpretations can be found somewhere in like church history. Mm -hmm. If you read any, any like like statistics, or if you read like any like commentaries on like Daniel or, or Mark or whatever by any early fathers or bishops or whatever, mm -hmm. yes, there are some things that they might see that are not completely accurate, right? However, it's good to see if your understanding is like the old understanding. 
I think when you step into your worldview, of course it'll be whatever your understanding is. I guess, the, the, yeah, the disconnect, and again, that's fine. It's just the disconnect that I'm having yeah. is how it's going from one to the other, back to the other. And then the root of the you're, issue you're, is... You're literalizing it almost as if that you're like a, um, like a Tanakh observing Jew without the Old Testament. Sorry, that's just why I think you're confused. Well, then wouldn't it be fair that if it was revealed to the Jews that we would understand it the way they understood it? So... Like that, you know what I mean? Are you talking about um, Ezekiel in the New Testament? If Ezekiel is interpreted by the Jews as literal, yeah. then why not? Why not? It? Because um, we hold that the greatest teacher of the Torah isn't a particular rabbi that you can name from the Jewish tradition, but that it is Jesus, because he is the one who gives the scripture in the first place. He is that angel of the Lord who um, Moses talks to at Sinai, who gives him the Ten Commandments. Yeah, that's kind of strange to me, man. Right. But I'm not a Jew, so you don't have to worry about that. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Look, you know? Jews have their own means of interpretation, sure, absolutely. Yeah. But then there, there are certain inconsistencies that uh, they fall into, certain things that they they don't necessarily want to like, dis, like, uh, discuss or throw to the wind. Like, for example, that angel of the Lord I, I talked about. Mm -hmm. The angel of the Lord is a very interesting figure in the Old Testament because it basically does the actions of God and bears the name of God. And so the way that, that they interpret that is like, I find interesting but unsatisfactory. But hey, they, they won't care what I say. Yeah, they won't care. They won't care what I say either, nope. you know? Yeah. So I guess, I mean, it seems like, uh, like you had mentioned, we have a lot of those commonalities. I think, you know, we talked about it a little bit a while back, but we were talking about the knowledge bank of yep. God. And I said, for lack of better word. Okay. But the idea is that you are also in that pre-existence, meaning you were in that realm of souls. So. I am created. Yeah, you are created. Right? Meaning yeah. that I didn't have an existence. Yeah. And then now I do. Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. So me being created has no bearing on the knowledge of God. Because no, it doesn't. I, I, I you, agree with you. In our conception, God sees our entire reality in a yes. singular glance. Right? Yes. Now, before I am created, or, or we hold, at the point of, of conception, that is when the soul of a human being is created. It doesn't flow from a dimension into... That's from your worldview? Yes. Okay, great, great, great. It doesn't great, 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 flow great. from one dimension into no another. It is created in essence as well. Got it. So, so because, uh, interestingly, the, the idea of us like existing in a different realm before we enter this one is actually like a, a platonic idea. Okay, well, uh, how do you... Plato believed in, like, um, in the uh, presence of, of, of the soul. So the soul com comes from the world of ideas okay. into the world of... Um, he called this world, like, uh, like, 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 like the world of Yeah, world I know. It's been a while since I've read his works, too. Yeah. I, uh, and and, let and me... then when, when we come in, we forget everything from the world of, right. of, um, of like, perfection. Yeah. And then we have to do philosophy to remember it again. Yeah. Okay, so how do you explain Adam? What about him? He was obviously created before the Earth. No. He was, he was the last to be created. <laughs> So Adam was never Sequ sent... Sequentially, he was the last thing to be created. So, so do you believe that Adam was not created in the heavens? No. You believe he was created in, on Earth? In the garden, yes. Okay, where is the garden? The garden is no longer accessible to human beings. No, but where is it? Is it on the Earth or is it outside of the Earth? So, this is actually very, very interesting. So, the garden isn't necessarily a physical location. The garden is actually, or if you look at it from the garden to the temple to Jesus, the garden is supposed to be an intersection where the divine and creation actually interact with each other. So a different realm? Not a different realm. Some place in this realm that we will go back to at the end of days. So if the idea is that it's a space where God can interact with humanity in an almost direct fashion, which is why you hear verses in Genesis like God walks the garden in the cool of the day, that kind of thing. Okay. Then the garden is closed off to humanity when Adam and Eve are kicked out. The Bible describes that God places swords there. Uh, uh, to guard against anyone entering because in that garden there is the, the tree of uh, knowledge of evil and then the tree of life and death. Mm. Now, that intersection again then gets copied or the idea gets transferred to the idea of a temple. Mm -hmm. But now, not everyone can go in. Only the ritually clean Levites can go in. Okay, so see, the way that 
we understand it in Islam yep. is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created, you have the other realm, the heavens, right? Adam and Eve were created there. Before them were the angels. Okay, before the, bef and, and also before humankind, you had jinn. Yeah, it's a little better, right? It got a little better. Um, so the idea now is that two things. One, in his knowledge, all possibilities existed and all true possibilities uh, started to take place. Meaning, at one point in time, there was no angels and then there were angels. At one point in time, there was no jinn and there was jinn. At one point in time, and this is again just for simplistic terms, not saying in time, but at one point, okay? Then Adam and Eve, first Adam and then Eve from Adam, right? And then we were brought down to earth. But from Adam and Eve, all of our souls were created. So that's why we have that we come from the loin of Adam, meaning that all of the, all of mankind, all of humankind was in that realm already in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge for lack of better wording. So we have a real existence before we're here on earth. Oh yeah, absolutely, and we're going home. That's the whole point of wanting to get to Jannah, man. You want to go home, man. You don't want to stay here. If we exist, because this is very, very particular, yeah. if we exist in a reality, yep. in Allah's mind, before we come here, do we do anything while we're there? Don't know. We, there's a realm of souls and we don't, like I said, we don't delve into what so we did, what we didn't do. It's your, not important. Is your soul then eternal? What do you mean by eternal? Like, As in, it's like uncreated? No. Your soul is created. Okay. That's, not, that's not what I said. So like I said, there was a point in time where there was absolute nothingness, only the creator. But then, and then he... Not yet. Oh, so we were so we had angels first, okay? Or there might have even been other creation that we're not aware of. Okay, and, and just let's just to check. At this point, we don't exist in the mind of Allah. At this point, no. You always exist in His mind. So you you always exist in His knowledge. No. So so Allah's knowledge you're, isn't created. I don't understand how you're like. So I, you're you're hear, you're. Hear me out. You're um, going too much into metaphysics and you don't need to. Well, hear me out. Allah's knowledge isn't created. Yes, if I we understand. Exist there, are we yes. not then not created too? No, bro. Okay, let me try to simplify it for you. The abstract idea, okay, like a blueprint. A blueprint. Is it still a creation? So you know how earlier I asked you, did we exist in a real way? You said yes. Yeah, absolutely. We existed in a real way. We, so then, because you're, the you're skipping a step. Okay. You have the knowledge bank, which is a form of existence, for and lack of a better word. Existed. And again, you're, going, you're delving too deep into the metaphysics, bro. So, and I'm trying to explain to you. How we got here? Because I, I told you that Jesus had pre-existent glory, and you said all prophets did. Yeah, they all did because right. they were all in the knowledge bank. Right. Prophets, he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew who was going to be a prophet or so not. The, um, the claim of having Christ in glory, we take that to be a divine claim. Yeah, that's your worldview. That's great. I, I don't see that to be, I, I don't see glory to be as a form of divinity in my well, worldview. So Jesus is saying in, in Matthew 17, 5, that he had glory with the Father yeah. before the world was. Okay. So it appears that, you remember I asked you, what are we doing? in this like you know abstract mind uh, uh, that, that we're in right and you said you know we don't know well i don't know so, i don't know somehow what jesus going by your view appears to have memories of this time no man uh you see what so you're doing there's a couple how, things how would he claim yeah but you can get it through before the world was for example. yeah again i don't hold to the bible claim to be true but right you, you but i will bible. i will give you i will give you the courtesy of stepping into your worldview. Okay. Now, stepping into your worldview, it could be revealed to him. So it could have been revealed to him that he had glory in the past. Now, where you're conflating the issue is you're saying glory equals divinity. And I'm saying that that's not the case. Um, God says in the Old Testament that he shares his glory with no one. So that's right. why. Now, I understand. Do you believe now, you're, now, you're, now what you're doing is you're saying if he doesn't share his... Okay, well, if you believe that, 
then if that's the case, Jesus can't have divinity because he doesn't share his glory with anybody. And that's what I'm trying but to say. He's sharing it with Jesus, so therefore he isn't a separate person from God. No. But he's a person of God. No. See, this is when you're trying to bring upon you're trying to bring upon the Trinitarian worldview. Well, it's, and it's I, right there. Brother, uh, you're creating so many yarns that I have to untwine. So let's take it step by step, okay? okay so God doesn't First lose off, glory okay, great. Does God ever lose his glory? Uh, no. So how did Jesus lose his glory? He doesn't lose his glory. So what happens? What did is he do? Table by, it? Uh, no, by virtue of him taking on the form of a servant, right? So he um, emptied himself. Yeah, yeah, so, so, so he lost it. No, he didn't lose it ever, right? What's empty? So Nothing. The, so again, the, okay. the terminology there, it, the glory of God isn't something that can be tabled or emptied, right? How isn't or is? Isn't, is not. So how did he empty himself? Right? Because it, it's, it's from God's direct nature. The emptying is the description of him coming as a human. So assuming I, the form of man and a lower station, and the glory that he has when he is the second person of the Trinity, that process of him walking around as a man that can be perceived is the idea of him uh, letting go of his glory. Yeah, and I can't but reconcile that from my right? worldview. I can see it how you, so, I can see why you see that are, because are you, you need to with the hadith about Allah's veil. Okay. Yeah, uh, you'd have to give me the reference. Uh, I, I, I to pull it from memory. Muslim 179a. If you the idea is that if you can read it for me, then I can. You know, I don't think I've ever actually read that one, yep. but I'm happy to take a look at it with you. One second, sorry. Sure. So, if I pull off you first. Yeah. Well, effectively, my idea here is that Jesus is similar to this idea of, of this veil. Which one am I reading? Uh, that one. This is, this is the Hadith material. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, okay. So it says, The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was standing amongst us, yep. and he told us five things. He yep. said, Verily, the exalted and mighty God does not sleep, yep. and it does not benefit him to sleep. Yep. He lowers the scale and lifts it. Yep. The deeds in the night are taken up to him before the deeds of the day, and the deeds of the day before the deeds of the night. His veil is the light. In the hadith narrated by Abu Bakr, instead of the word light, it is fire. If he withdraws it, the veil, the splendor of his countenance would consume his creation so far as his sight reaches. What's the issue? So, no, it's not an issue. It's, oh, an issue. Okay. it's a comparison. The idea is that Allah has this countenance, you know, like his face, his identity, his glory. And it's something so powerful that it needs to be shielded from creation. Okay. Otherwise, it will be destroyed. Okay. Right? So now, Jesus has the, uh, the same thing, but by being, you know, three person of eternity. However, by taking on the form of a man, when he looks Peter in the eyes, he doesn't destroy him. So that's our understanding of the, of the glory uh, um, being shed when it comes to a human being. It's not being yes. like, taken away or destroyed or table simply comes in the form of a human and you can interact with it. Yeah. Again, I don't see how you're drawing the comparison. Jesus is the veil. Jesus is the veil? Is the veil. The, the veil you just read here, Jesus is the veil. But that veil that you're reading is not even from this world. Neither is Jesus. Uh, but he was here, manifest. Right. And you're saying the only reason why it, the manifest was there is because he was functioning as the veil? Uh, no, the reason why we were able to see him and the idea of him shedding his glory is because he's functioning as the veil. Okay. Actually, Paul and, even calls him. And that's why that's why I'm not seeing how you're drawing that comparison because one veil shield from Allah's countenance. And without the veil, Allah's countenance will destroy creation. Mm -hmm. Jesus is talked about as being the uh, image of the invisible God. So he is that very veil. That, and when he says, he who's seen me has seen the Father, uh -huh. he is acting as that very veil, as that very thing by which you can get a glimpse of God without being destroyed. Yeah, but brother, I'm, I'm still finding uh, it's strange that you're taking a hadith that's talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that a veil being there for him, and now you're now, ex uh, like, do you accept the hadith to be true? So, like, like, are you are you Muslim? Like, this I don't is, understand. This is, this is very funny uh -huh. because 
It is my understanding that there are many things that Islam takes from Christianity that it can't quite explain, but only reference. I can give you a whole list if you want, but this is one of the things. The idea of God, of the veils and God. So why stop halfway, bro? Why not read the Quran and accept the rest? Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm well, a bit perplexed. Like right. why, why are you so, choosing? Like, like why are you picking and choosing when you now you're? But because, yeah. hear me out real quick. No, no, no. Because here's how I'm understanding it. No, no. You're saying, okay, there was a messenger, and I accept what his hadith is. But I'm just gonna ignore the rest. No, I didn't. And that's why are you doing that, man? No, that's not my view at all. Oh, well then, so, then you can't use the hadith no, to draw I, a comparison, I bro. I can use the hadith because why? my claim is that there are things in Islam that are borrowed from Christianity, but are not fleshed out in Islam. That, that's my claim. And you're gonna use Christianity to flush them out? Yes, because Christianity has the fleshing out. Why? Let me show well, you. Islam doesn't need Christianity, bro. It's it, the other it, way around. It does because. If, I'm not example, understanding in, how. In the Quran, multiple times, it was something along the lines of, has the story of Moses not reached you? Okay. Right? Talking to, you would assume, the pagan Arabs, right? And then okay. it gives like a small glimpse of Moses' story. Okay. But then where's the rest of it? Well, Bible. there's, no, <laughs> bro. Okay. So a couple things, man. Yeah. First off, there's many a times when the story of Musa a.s. was mentioned uh, throughout the Quran, and each of them can give a, a, contrib a contribution to some additional detail. Uh, however, um, this is the beauty of the Quran, bro, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us exactly what we need. Nothing less, nothing more. And to say that... The hadith prove otherwise. What, what, do you, what, do you, what do you mean? The presence of hadith prove otherwise. Yeah. It appears that you need more. No, brother. The, see, now you're adding another ball of yarn. Okay, fine. The, okay, okay, okay. It's okay. Carol, I'll entertain Carol. it. No okay, problem. Carol, I, Carol. I can see that you're kind of sincere, but you have these things that really need ironing out. So, okay. Ignore what the, I said. The Carol. hadith uh, in the Quran, it tells us to follow the Prophet. It tells us to look to, at him for a way as guidance. And the, the hadith is a comprehension uh, and a deeper understanding of elements of the Quran. Alhamdulillah. So, you, you have uh, the first teacher of the Quran, bro, was the Prophet So of course we're going to listen to what he has to say. Not only did he receive the message, but then he showed us how to best approach the message in the best manner possible to get the best results possible. So the, the thing is, like, hadith is also revelation, bro, but I'm, I'm telling you that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said is complete and part of his sayings is to go and look at the Prophet ﷺ, meaning what God told us includes, you have the Quranic speech, which is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the direct words. Then you have the inspiration, which is the ahadith. I'm aware of this. Okay, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. This is just for the benefit of anybody that's listening. So can now... I, can I add one thing to the hadith? Uh, yeah, there are ahead. some hadith, so not all hadith are revelation. But well, there are some that are, and they're called Hadith Qudsi. Uh, okay, so again, you go with the authentic, you go with the authentic Hadith, and I'm not going to debate Hadith with you because I'm not a Hadithin, um, and there's a direct science to this. So if you want to, you can definitely consult people of knowledge on that stuff. I wouldn't even know, call it revelation. Okay, well that's your that's your take. There's certain, you know, that's you see the that's your take. That's and you're, you're entitled to your opinion, uh, and I, I'm fine with that. If that's uh, meaning, I accept whatever you say to be your position. If that's your position, great. Hadith could see a difference from my understanding. Yeah, well, these are the, the revelations. The, yes. So, and again, to, but to say that we are to say that the Quran is incomplete yes. or that it's missing something, yeah. that is a very uh, that's a dangerous thing. It's, I, I don't think so. Um, okay. Well, Adam has a wife in the Quran. Okay. What's her name? How what? It doesn't say that in the Quran. Okay, so what's the problem? So if the Quran had everything we needed to know, no. <laughs> why do we need okay. to refer back I'm gonna to the explain Bible to you. To so yet another ball of yarn. Uh, so let me explain. So why do you need to know the name of Adam's wife for your salvation? 
So, are you saying that the Quran only contains what's needed for salvation? Because I, yes. I, don't, I don't think that everything in the Bible, for example, yes. is required for salvation, right? For example, knowing... How would you know what to do, bro? Huh? How would you know what to do or what to believe in? How would you know? So, I don't think that everything, every story, because for example, the Bible contains history. I don't think knowing the history has any bearing on your, on your salvation. Yeah, but the, in my personal the, opinion. the core concepts, right? But, so, like, for example, the Quran, yeah. the more that you read it, the more that you engage in it, mm -hmm. alhamdulillah, it builds your iman, it builds your faith. So when you read for the purposes of understanding and for the purposes of trying to locate the truth, you're going to receive that guidance that's necessary. You're going to get that opening from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So point being is, ahead, here's what you're saying, yep. and, and I, I don't mean to cut you. Yep. What I'm trying to tell you is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us everything comprehensively what we needed. Part of that comprehension is actually the hadith which are authentic. So now, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us his book, so the Quran, and he gave us his messenger. So you have to look at it holistically. You can't say, uh, we're going to take one without the other. It's just silly to. Now, why are certain stories repeated? Or am I going to have to know the name? Or why is this detail missing? Uh, you, 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 okay, no problem. You are labeling it as missing, but the intent where is it for, for, was for it to never be there. So for example, the intent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was for Hawa to not be in there. You saying that it's missing, meaning that he had an intent for it to be there, and for some reason now we're going to question the preservation. And that's a whole other topic. No, I'm not going to get into preservation. No, 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 I, know, I don't think you will. I think reliance is I don't think you will. a big conversation. Yeah, absolutely, because yeah, for sure. If I am a pagan Arab yeah. in the 7th century, yeah. and you say, you know, you are the prophet, and then you're telling me things like, have you not heard the story of Moses? I'm gonna say who the hell's Moses, right? Yeah, okay. So, in my opinion, when the Quran says things like that, it is banking on the idea that there is already a story of Moses that exists somewhere, and what the Quran is doing is just summarizing the story that already exists. Okay. Because, for example, you, you believe that Moses is like born in Egypt, that he kills a man, runs away to Midian, comes back, frees the Israelites, yeah. he's in the promised land, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then all the details about like what what happens mm -hmm. and in what sequence this has happened in are all in the Bible. Yeah. But how do you know that those details are correct from the Bible? So, so when the Quran is referencing them, it's referencing. It's not them referencing as the details; they don't they exist. Correct. They don't. No, 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 no. No. See, this is uh, another issue. And uh, you know, like I, I, I love you for the sake of God, bro. Um, and I can, I can see that you're, you're genuine in trying to understand these things. And you know, may Allah guide all of us, bro. Uh, so, nowhere in the Quran does it say, look at the details of what was said previously. Rather, what Allah subhanahu wa that's why I said, Allah subhanahu wa tells us exactly what we need to know and nothing more. The details that you have in your Bible, you hold them to be true because you believe in the Bible. The Quran does not hold them to be true. The Quran. How can you tell? Because because, it, because it's not it's not included in the Quran. So, so then, what that tells me is that the author didn't know about that information. No, what that tells you is the author, you the, the safest and most intellectually correct thing to say is the author did know about the information but chose not to include it. I don't see why they would because it would make the story in the Quran a lot more fulfilling. No, man, because now here, this is what you're doing. You're applying your way and saying, I know better than God. Is the full story better than the partial story? No. Again, it's it's what you're looking at. You don't, you're, a couple things, bro. One, you're under the assumption that you have the full story. We're, Two, you're under the assumption. We have a fuller story, I for sure. I understand. We know about Moses you have, born to you don't have, you don't have, that in the you don't have the story. You have a story. So do now, you, there, there is no better alternative. 
So I'm going yeah, to there is. There isn't. Yeah, there, there absolutely is. Is there, there absolutely a more is. full story of there Moses absolutely, out there than There absolutely the is a better alternative. What the alternative you? is that whatever you have is not necessary. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed exactly what he wanted to reveal. Nothing more, nothing less. So, so the alternative example, is, like, the alternative is, yeah. you may, you may. Yeah. The alternative is that exactly what you need, the spoonful of medicine, is, 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 is complete. There's nothing that you can add to it or take it away to make it any more beneficial. I disagree. Okay. For this reason. The, so the Quran doesn't, for example, mention the Ark of the Covenant. I assume you're familiar with that idea. Okay. Are yeah. you at all? Yeah. 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 There's, there's a structure that the Israelites have in the desert when with Moses yeah. that contains the Ten Commandments, uh, a bowl of manna, you know, the fruit from heaven. Yeah, yeah, for the Quran, sure. Okay. Uh, the staff of uh, of Joshua, I think, and then yeah, I don't know what's in there. Okay. And also the presence of God itself. Okay. It's in that box, okay. made of gold. Okay. Okay. They transfer it, it goes with them, it enters the kingdom, it stays in the temple. The Quran doesn't mention that at all. Why, why does it need to? Why is that exactly? Yeah, why does it need to? Exactly. The Ark is the very thing that gives the temple the identity of having God's presence. Okay. It's, a, it's even a Jewish idea okay. called uh, the, the Shekinah, the, the dwelling, okay. right? Of the presence of God. Yeah. Now, that idea, physical in the Old Testament, in, in the form of a box, is actualized in the person of Jesus. Okay. By not mentioning that in the Quran, you miss the connection to Jesus who calls himself the way, truth, and life. And this is again from your worldview. So that, and we're trying to tell you. For example, a series of things. No Quran. problem. No problem. So, a, a couple of salvation. Yeah, for right. So, it doesn't because uh, what you're doing is you are saying it is a requirement. You are saying it is a requirement for you to know the Ark of the Covenant. It is a requirement for you to believe in this temple. It is a requirement for you. And I'm trying to tell you it's not. Islam does not depend on Judaism. It does not depend on Christianity. It is a comprehensive religion that does not depend on anything but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what he chooses to reveal. So I, I'm trying to tell you, take a moment, step out of your worldview and recognize that what you're looking to do is you're looking to lay down puzzle pieces. And I respect that, bro. You're a man of investigation. You like to see things in conclusion. Okay, I, 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 I respect you, man. I really do. So now the, on that same journey, right, you have to accept what you have with the flaws that it has. And in the same way that you're building those bridges to avoid the pitfalls of the flaws that you have based on it could be pure faith or it could be just a love for whatever you have. Okay, this is part of your examination, brother. Part of your examination is that when you acknowledge that there is indeed another messenger and there was another revelation and that revelation is telling you what all the other prophets did that were critical to salvation. So when they all submitted to one God, when they all prayed to one God, when they all asked help from that one God, it didn't require any temples, it didn't require any, and then all, you know, the Ark of the Covenant, it didn't require any trinkets. It is incumbent on you to research that wholeheartedly with the same investigative zeal that you have for the last revelation. And you will recognize that the path is a lot easier, bro. It's a lot easier than you're making it out to be. Because oftentimes when I talk to my Christian brothers, man, they love to, um, uh, and they take it from a position of good faith, at least the good ones do. They love to have a thread that's uncut. And I'm trying to tell you that the thread that you're working with has been cut hundreds of times, but you've band-aided one part to another to make your section work. And I'm telling you that the thread that we have is complete, uncut, doesn't have any flaws, and still encompasses elements of your thread which are true and eliminates the ones which are cut and led to falsehood. So in order to obtain salvation, it's not from the old that what we need it's from the new that we have that is preserved and i encourage you to again with that same zeal bro that same like passion is to look at it because you'll find that it's it's really simple man i mean i'm telling you it's really really simple all polemics aside bro like remember both of us here are we feel that we're standing upon truth and you know i always like to ask my christian brothers like why do you want me to accept christianity 
Uh, it's the only way for you to actually get in eternal life. There's no other way. Okay, and I want you to accept Islam because I feel the same. And I feel that I'm upon truth, and There's you feel that you're upon truth. Right. And, you know, we want well for one another, bro. I've got no skin in the game to, to try to, you know, one-up you or to win an argument. I don't care about that, dude. My, my account is with my creator. Okay. The same thing, your account is with the creator. But I'm telling you that I'm standing upon certainty, and I'm showing you my evidences and reasons for that certainty. And I've explored both sides, and I genuinely, genuinely encourage you to explore this side. I don't think you've explored the Christian side well enough. Okay. That, that's, that's my issue. Okay. Um, because, for example, if you say that Islam doesn't rely on Christianity or Judaism, it doesn't. Why are like 99% of the prophets you talk about in the Quran all Jewish? They're not. They're not. Uh, they're, you, uh, besides the they're, Quran, they're not. They're not, bro. Peter, they're all Jewish. No, they're not. See, this is the thing: is you have a. And again, God bless you, bro, but you have a, an understanding that is... Huh? No, they're not. I'm telling you, there's no one that you can list. From Adam all the way to Muhammad, there's no one that was Jewish. No one. He's not Jewish. If you're talking about nationality, if you're talking about origin, okay, he was a Palestinian Jew. But if you're talking about what his... Again, what you're doing is you're conflict. I'm, I'm trying to help you understand. Do you see what I mean? These were if all Muslim, bro. It, they were all Muslim. Jewish. They're, they're, I'm trying to explain to you they're not, and I'm repeating myself. Which they're not, brother. None of them are Jewish, man. None of them are Jesus Jewish. Jesus literally is Jewish. He, by faith, he is not a Jew. By nationality, by origin, he's a, a Palestinian Jew. Well, if, if by faith he wasn't a Jew, yeah, he wasn't. why does he only quote Jewish scripture? It doesn't matter what he quotes, dude. And again, you're looking at it from your worldview. If he was a Hindu dude. and he was only quoting Jewish scripture, how does that help his case for Hinduism? And again, same thing with Hinduism. It's both a nationality and a place of origin. People say, oh, I'm Hindi. But they're not actually like from Hind. Zoroastrian? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is so like, better? don't do that to yourself, bro. It's you have to look at what he actually did, what his actions did. His actions were submission to God. He was a Muslim, bro. He was a Muslim. It was only until the labeling came from other people, man. We can go eat. No, Bismillah, bro. It's been a, it's been a good conversation. I think it's a good spot to end. We have things to check out for all sorts of stuff. Are you busy? Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna catch up with the brothers. Uh, we'll see. I've been talking to you. It's been it's been a long time. Alhamdulillah. You know, I hope that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala guides us both, bro. And you know, fair enough. Then, you know? Fair enough. Um, I guess the last thing that I'll show you is this is what I meant by the way. About okay. The, the whole veil idea. This okay. This is in Second Corinthians. From twelve. Uh, twelve. Yeah. Okay. This okay. About the whole veil idea. So it's, no one can talk to me who licks the toilet bowl. You cannot, you are not uh, on a level to talk to me. Or of it. Uh, it says some, the, some, uh, some, uh, some, uh, some uh, So we Okay. Uh, where, where do you want me to stop? Uh, so 15? Just, just yeah, as long as you, you, you've sort of seen, yeah. So the, the idea of, of this veil and how it is actually taken away in Christ. Okay. So the, as, as I'm trying to show you, the okay. perception of the veil is something that's only um, within Islam. It's in Islam. Well, no, we'll explain. Sure, sure. I think the actual explanation you'll find here in the actual Bible. You know, that, that very hadith that you gave me explained it. But it didn't explain it on, on Christ. It the, explained it on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The issue would be like, if the veil is a thing that can block Allah's countenance, how can a created thing block the magnitude of God if it's not like in some way divine itself? Right, and, and, and that's... So we would say we can because Christ yeah, is God. Yeah, and I, I understand that's from your worldview. So he needed to take on that veil in order so, to be... To be uh, right, by human and, and, and from us, he's just a man. So from our worldview, he doesn't, you know... He doesn't need that. Now, your scriptures will support your worldview. But you quoted from them. Now, uh, Joseph 17, 3. Yeah, I, I understand But then, that. before 3 proceeds 2 and 1, and then yeah, following you can 3 read proceeds it. 4 and 5. Yes, you can read it all in context, and it won't change the fact that he explicitly calls the Father the only true God. That's the issue. And I don't want to open up another can. I'm taking you away from your food, man. No, At this point, I, it's haram, I, bro. I am not hungry. I am not hungry. You know, it's okay, okay, man. You know what? Let me show you. Can I show you, like... Just, okay. just email me on it. Give, okay, give, we'll me, give me four minutes. Is that cool? I can't. I, trust me, two hours is nope. a long time, and 
Look, I'm here for one day. Okay. One day. And then I have to head back. Jesus says that all that belongs to God. I will God. let you have the last word. Bismillah. Sure. Go. go ahead. Uh, John 17, 6. Uh -huh. Jesus said that everything that belongs to the Father is His. Okay. Any thoughts? No. All I right. don't have any thoughts. Cool. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Right then. All that the Father has is mine, and therefore I said that I will take what is mine and declare it to you. So. Okay. Cool. So, you know. That's, that's fine. That sounds kind of beyond a problem for me. Okay. If I said all, all Allah had is mine, that's like crazy. Okay. All right. Thanks, man. Bless you. All right. God bless you too, man. Uh, I don't know what the heck to do with all this stuff. <laughs> Look at this. Uh, um, crazy. That's a lot of cameras. Yeah, it's a final lot. It's a final lot. I hope I don't have to click a bunch of buttons, but... No, I think the cameraman will do it for you. But okay. You got to give those that yeah. thing in your neck. How am I supposed to find everybody? Yeah, this is why. Give it to him. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.